Good day and welcome to Fairfield County Talk Radio, fairfieldcountytalkradio.com. Our program is What's Happening in Fairfield County. I'm John Marino, and we are made possible by our good friends over at Cuffs Lawn Service, also Fairfield County Tick Control, and Ecosystems Irrigation and Lighting, Gutter Brothers Home Services, MDM Sanitation. Good morning, Wilton. And by Earthscapes Landscaping Management and Development, also by Apollo X Pest Control of Dagny's Real Estate, the Wilton Chamber of Commerce, and special thanks to our good friends over at Entergy, the Indian Point Energy Center, across the border in Westchester for all they did for us throughout the years, throughout our tri-state area. We are joined here today on what's happening in Fairfield County by Matthew Mandel, the executive director of the Westport Weston Chamber of Commerce, as we continue to reopen around Fairfield County in Connecticut and our tri-state area. Matthew, first of all, welcome. One of the key issues and one of the key points is masking or unmasking. Where are we right now with the latest CDC mandate on that? How do you interpret what many seem to be having a problem interpreting? Well, I got to think it's confusing when you're masked if you're not vaccinated, you're unmasked if you are, and you go into a store, and how is the worker there supposed to know? I think that created a hell of a lot of confusion for people. I think that the CDC guidelines should have been a little clearer in how to do it. Um, but we're going to move forward with what we have. And the, uh, the governor agreed to the uh, CDC guidelines. So did New York. New Jersey said, no, we're going to keep the masks a little bit longer. So if, if you've been totally vaccinated, you're allowed to go into a store without a mask. I personally still wear my mask. I don't want to freak people out. Mm-hmm. Now, Governor Lamont, obviously, to me, he seems to be chomping at the bit for a while now to get everything reopened. I think a lot of his Logic and reasoning is that much of Connecticut is a lot more rural than, say, much of the New York and New Jersey portions of the tri-state area, too. The openings in Westport, in Weston, throughout Fairfield County, they've been going step by step for a number of months now. We seem to have crossed a threshold. Where are we with that in Westport and in Weston? Is everything pretty much reopen bars, restaurants, indoors, outdoors, gyms, movie theaters, etc. cetera? Uh, everything's open. And you just need to be wearing your mask in public transit sites, uh, in nursing homes, in other uh, sensitive areas, hospitals, etc. You can go in there. I know that our restaurants in Westport are taking a somewhat a conservative approach. They're focusing still on their outdoor dining, which Westport did a whole lot of work on to create a lot of outdoor dining during the pandemic and then uh, keeping it forward once this pandemic seems to be over. Uh, Inside, even though originally they allowed to go to 100%, there still was the social distancing, so the mathematics didn't allow for fully 100%, and some of our restaurants are keeping that. So they're Mm -hmm. keeping up the plastic, they're keeping the tables at a distance, and then slowly they're going to uh, erase it. They don't want to freak people out, and I think that was a very prudent uh, decision on their parts. Mm -hmm. How do you, as the executive director of the Westport Weston Chamber of Commerce, work with restaurants and work with any indoor facility in this type of situation to let them know that things may be a little safer than they think and that we can, within the confines of the inside portions of any particular business, if they have an inside and outside the inside portion, if it's totally inside, that it's safer than they think to reopen right now. So let's try a little bit more, if not maybe going all the way. Uh, I'm not sure I'd agree that it is safer. I, I am more of the conservative view that we should continue to do outdoor dining and then slowly move inside. I wouldn't jump to that. And I think that's where our restaurants, a lot of them came to me and said, hey, how are we dealing with it? We'd rather not spook our customers or out and just invite them in gradually. Other restaurants have completely opened up and people are responding to that. Uh, But it's really up to the restaurants. We are in an open situation now. And uh, though I see most of our restaurants still having their staff, their wait staff still wearing masks. And that might well be prudent because you don't know if the person who you're serving has has or hasn't been vaccinated. So it's that uh, dichotomy that exists and and being unsure who is vaccinated or not. But the the, the goal is to have people continue to come out to dine in our restaurants. We've closed off uh, Church Lane, so it's an open area. We've expanded out Railroad Place so people can eat outside. And that's more of where the future is going. Europe gravitates that naturally. Uh, America hasn't. 
And I think Westport is on the forefront of grabbing that European alfresco concept and expanding it and making it more integral to how we present ourselves. Mm -hmm. Do people, unless it's 30 degrees outside, do people seem like they would prefer now to eat outdoors, whereas a year ago, we probably never would have thought of it. Some places have outdoor dining or a limited outdoor dining they've had for years, and yet most places had not. They had to quickly transform, reinvent themselves, which pretty much everybody did. Anybody who's around today pretty much did that. Did we kind of overturn, maybe find gold in the dust and the the ashes of COVID here, basically with outdoor dining, something maybe we should have thought about before, but better late than never? You, know, you, you, you call it gold, maybe I call it silver lining. I mean, even though it was a horrible situation, the pandemic, and, and we mourn the friends and, and relatives and people that have been lost, but we do move on. And I think that it was something that we learned from it. We adapted quickly and then found that it something that people enjoyed. I, I personally side you, you're watching people walk by the dogs, people walking dogs, people you haven't seen who aren't coming into the restaurant. You wave to them and talk to them. It's a far more vibrant scene. You can have music, you can have multiple restaurants out there. I think it's something that we're embracing. It's, it's that piazza format that you find in Italy or, or, or in, in France where, you know, you dine out and there are different restaurants and everybody's sitting outside enjoying themselves. And I think that's something that we've embraced. And I think that's something that we're going to use moving forward. You brought up an interesting point about restaurants seeing each other outside. Does that lead to competition between restaurants to some extent with the outdoor dining? Maybe you have a strip of four or five places back to back to back to back to back next to each other. If I'm a restaurant owner, maybe I say, you know, I want to promote really my place and I got to fight the other four people on my block here to get customers outdoors. They don't just see me now. They see everybody else, too. Maybe too many choices for me and my business. Oh, people bring people. That's the first thing from that. And once you see people are out there, but then again, you can't eat Chinese food every night and you can't eat Mexican food every night. So if you've got different uh, cuisines on the street, you, you have Chinese one night, you have Mexican another night, you have American fair another night, maybe you do some Thai. Hey, and there's a barbecue place across the street or down the block and you go there. Uh, so uh, originally, a lot of people, when we were changing our um, alcohol rules, uh, to allow for a closer proximity. People are like, oh, there's competition. And in the end, they realize, no, it's not because they, you go for the Indian food that day, you're walking past the Italian place and go, hey, I think I'll go there next time. So five days later, you're off at the Italian place and then back to the Indian two weeks later. So I think each of them uh, feeds off of each other. And I think it's, it's a great way of, of having fun in the town and having the residents do things. How important is it for outdoor establishments, especially any restaurant, obviously, especially you're crowded on the same block, you're on a restaurant trip, you have four, five, six establishments on the same block. How important is it for all of them to work together now, knowing they all want the same piece of the same pie? I think they naturally gravitate to it. I mean, obviously, they're doing everything for themselves, but I think that there's some some camaraderie that 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 uh, appears and they work it out. I mean, if you look at Church Lane, I think uh, it's, it's working out pretty well. Same thing with Railroad Place. You, you push them out into the parking spots with these wooden structures and they're all enjoying themselves. And again, you walk past the one place and you say, oh, I'll go there next time. And, and you see it's vibrant. Again, people bring people. So if there are people eating there, he goes, oh, they, they like that place. I'm going to go there. And that's what's important is to, to show the vibrancy of it. And if you've got a dead spot, it, it's going to remain dead. And that's what you try to avoid. Mm -hmm. Matthew Mandel is the executive director of the Westport Weston Chamber of Commerce here on Fairfield County Talk Radio. What's happening in Fairfield County? Matthew, other businesses indoors, offices, corporations in the Westport Weston area, how quickly are they reopening now? Well, that's an entirely different story. Uh, people are still reticent to, to, to go to work inside. Uh, we found that we can run our economy and our places perfectly well uh, remotely. We, we've done it for an entire year. And so they're slowly but surely going to uh, move back into this, but it may not be every day. They may go in for three days and out for two. They may be on one week and off another week. The interesting thing is all these remote office places, they're finding uh, new clientele. 
because if you don't have to go into the city to work, but you do need an office space, some of them are, are gaining traction. And I think that's mm -hmm. the way it works. We found mm -hmm. a lot of businesses suffered during the pandemic, but we also had a huge number of businesses that really knocked it out of the park. And so it's sort of a, a shift in the economy and how we're going to do it. We're going to see how that shakes out. Uh, the governor himself said last week that the, pande uh, the pandemic has created a change in the paradigm of commutation. And we may never see it be the same, or it may take a decade for it to come back because office space doesn't have to be rented as much by the businesses. They can have their people be remote and they could share some of their office space, uh, you know, such as a hot desk where you come in and use your desk and the next day someone else uses yours. These are all the different things that are changing and how we're doing it. You alluded to this a couple of times, the area, the restaurant district, that it's still relatively new in Westport, the west side of the river. How well was that doing before we had to shut down? Since it's still relatively new, how much did the pandemic hurt there in its kind of opening stages? And where are we now with that? Well, you've got a bunch of nice restaurants on the west side of our river, and that's something we've been trying to expand to. Uh, you know, people worry about walking across the bridge. It's weird. It's a physical barrier in your mind. Don't walk across the bridge, but you should walk across the bridge and find it. Uh, I think Bar Taco over there killed it. Uh, Arezzo's doing very well. They have a beautiful patio. You can go out there. And we have Oco as well. I mean, they put up these large tents that augmented their inside dining. Those tents will be coming down and they'll have outdoor dining as well. And so we're, we're trying it. I mean, the Chamber of Commerce is on the west side of the uh, the river there. So it's our little home base. So we enjoy it. While the downtown is always the focus, the, the little offshoot, the second cousin across the river is is a is a really good area, as well as Saugatuck, which is the, the larger, smaller cousin of, of downtown with all those restaurants. And, you know, of course, we run the Slice of Saugatuck Festival down there. And that's coming back on September 11th. Well, we've got it all slated together and I think it's going to be really good. So a slice of Saga Talk will be held this year. Yes, uh, we've, we're, we're going forward with it. I'm talking to the, the bouncy house people. I am organizing the bands. I mean, it, it's a phenomenal thing where you have 60 businesses all working together. Uh, and in food tastings, we have as many as 30 different food tastings there. We've got eight bands that are playing at the same time in all the different locations. It's, it's a different type of food festival where in most food festivals, everybody comes together in one location. You walk around table to table and have your food. Here is you're going to venue to venue to venue and realize that Saugatuck is a completely walkable area and that you can go from restaurant to restaurant. And when you do, there's another band to listen to, a different style. We sometimes have a steel band, a string band, a rock band, a blues band. Uh, so you go there and you have a great time. We have bouncy houses for the kids and balloon benders and things. So we're happy to bring that back. We couldn't run it last year, and this would be our 10th year of running it. So we're, we're excited that normalcy is coming back. And uh, so September 11th is a slice of soccer time. How about arts and theater locally? in Westport, in Weston? Well, the Levitt Pavilion didn't uh, uh, work out last year. Uh, we, we created a drive-in concert series, which we did on the parking lot, and we ran 10 of them, 10 for 10 sellouts, and the last one was last week with Dark Desert Eagles. But we uh, say mission accomplished. We, we did what we needed to do, and now the Levitt Pavilion is opening up. And so there will be music, live music. It will be socially distant to begin with. And maybe by the end of the summer, they'll open it up because, again, everybody wants to tread slowly here. Uh, the uh, Westport Country Playhouse is, is opening up as well. They're going to be doing some shows. And uh, also MOCA has got a whole bunch of different uh, things. That's the Museum of Contemporary Art in Westport. They've got some events as well. And so slowly but surely, the arts are coming back. Westport is a based on arts community. And uh, we're so happy to see it coming back. And, and by the fall, I think we'll be in full bloom. Mm -hmm. Any other, as we move along here, step by step, like you said, by fall, you hope to be, we hope to be back in full bloom by then. Any other key events indoor or outdoor that you're looking towards to try to do your best to make sure these events happen this year, things we missed out on last year? Well, the Downtown uh, Merchants Association will be running their fine arts fair. They've run it for 40 years. Last year, of course, we didn't. They didn't run it. Uh, there are different 
parts of this. There's a Chamber of Commerce and then there's Downtown Merchants Association. We work pretty well together. And uh, so their fine arts festival is going to be over Memorial Day weekend. And so they're going to have somewhat like a hundred different people and vendors uh, in tents along Main Street and around the area. They shut it all down and you can walk and see all the wonderful art. So all of you who haven't spent money on anything because of the pandemic, if you need a new piece of art for your house after the renovations you did while you're stuck, Come to the Fine Arts Fair, and it, it should be great. That's, I think, the 29th and 30th of May. Uh, so what else is happening? We're going to have sidewalk sales moving forward. And, of course, the, the Westport Dog Festival, which we had to cancel last year. And, again, this May, it should have been right around this time of year now. It wasn't right to run it. We're going to be running that October 10th. So uh, we'll come back, and we expect 3,000 people. A thousand dogs, and uh, if people need to be masked, they can be. Uh, dogs, we don't need to mask them, but uh, you know, they, there'll be licks and things, and uh, we'll get back to our great event. Yeah, even by that time, by October, it'll be a little cooler out there. It might be even a nicer time of year to run the dog festival than uh, Ab- absolutely. Uh, why we run it in the spring and and shows the fall, July and August. Uh, hot dogs with their tongues hanging out just uh, are not the same as a vibrant, happy animal in, in nice weather. <laughs> How closely are you working with other chambers of commerce in the area? Say, for example, Stamford, Norwalk, Wilton. We're in close communications, usually uh, Fairfield and Norwalk and I, since I'm been in between them, finding out what we're doing, sharing ideas and things. The CBIA, which is the uh, Connecticut Business and Industry Association, is sort of our umbrella group. And we've been meeting uh, monthly with them via Zoom to find out what other chambers are doing and figuring it out, such as I launched a Bring Your Own Blanket campaign during uh, the, the, the fall last year because we wanted people to still eat outside. And it's like, well, how can you do it? It's chilly. Well, you just bring your own blanket. And where did that come from? That came from Europe. Again, you know, you look at other cultures and see what they do. And people started to bring blankets and you could suddenly sit outside. It's amazing how warm you can get. So that was something we shared um, between the different chambers. So that was just Mm -hmm. one example. But, you know, someone runs a golf outing or we did this type of event or we did that type of event. Um, Yesterday, I was just in Derby and went to their first outdoor business after hours, which is a networking thing that all chambers run. And there we were at a brewery outside having beers, talking and, you know, shaking hands. And it was like, wow, I'm shaking somebody's hand again. And it was a little weird for a moment, but, you know, went over to the hand sanitizer uh-huh. and went like this. It's like, okay, right. I've been vaccinated. They've been vaccinated, but still we'll get there. Did you automatically put up your arm for an arm bump or a fist bump first before shaking hands? Yeah, there was kind of like this this thing yeah. for a second. But you start the with person's... the arm and then you move up to the hand, right? Finally, you shake. So I had yeah, finally exactly. somebody extend a hand to me a few days ago. And I looked, I went like that. We did that and then we shook after that. So, you know, step by step, we're getting back to where we should be. Matthew Mandel is the executive director of the Westport Weston Chamber of Commerce here on Fairfield County Talk Radio. Matthew, for anyone who would like to get in touch with the chamber, maybe get involved this spring, this summer, into the fall as we move forward here and open up more and more, what should they do? What is all the contact information you have? Well, you can always go to the westportwestonchamber.com. Uh, it's it's a mouthful, but uh, if you know where you're looking, you can find us. I think also Westport Chamber does it as well, westportchamber.com. Or you can always email me, Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-W, at westportwestonchamber.com and, and talk to me. Uh, if you've got a dog-related business, we're looking for vendors uh, to for the dog festival. We also have nonprofits. If you're a nonprofit, uh, they're free. Uh, regular vendors, if you're a for-profit, you pay a fee, but we, we look for the nonprofits, those who uh, uh, have adoption services or, or other things that are associated with helping animals out. So it's, it's uh, both pieces. Um, so, you know, come and talk to us. And uh, if you're interested in breaking into the, the Westport market and uh, being a business and a member of our chamber, please come because we, we do. We are an affluent community. There's money to be spent. So if you're a business that uh, might be interested uh, in, in getting involved, then come on over. Matthew, all the best to you. Congratulations on the step-by-step reopening finally now. And let's hope 
things continue this way, vaccines continue to work, the numbers continue to stay down where they are and even below. And let's have a great summer in the Westport, Western area, thanks to the Chamber of Commerce and so many who made reopening possible. Thank you, Matthew. Well, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate the time. Thank you. Much appreciated. Matthew Mandel is the executive director of the Westport Western Chamber of Commerce here on Fairfield County Talk Radio. FairfieldCountyTalkRadio.com. What's happening in Fairfield County is the show. I'm John Marino, and we are made possible by our title sponsors, Tufts Lawn Service and Fairfield County Tick Control, also by Ecosystems Irrigation and Lighting, Gutter Brothers Home Services, MDM Sanitation. Good morning, Wilton. And by Earthscapes Landscaping Management and Development, Apollo X Pest Control, the Wilton Chamber of Commerce, Dagny's Real Estate, and special thanks to our good friends over at Entergy, the Indian Point Energy Center across the Fairfield border in Westchester. Many thanks, all the best to you, and thank you for all you did all throughout the years for the tri-state region. You can catch all of our uh, Westchester, Fairfield, Rockland, Putnam, Orange, and Dutchess talk radio programming on our YouTube channel. Uh, that is Shark Creative YouTube. 